Nice peel, Joshua. There it is. For House Rossfield. To me, Blade! I expect Lady Goddatha will know. Oh, thank the Founder you were safe. Griffin is slain then? And a heartstone claimed. Yes, this radiant luster, like frozen flame, is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Goddatha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours, after all. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together, as Phoenix and Shield, as brothers in arms, only then might those enemies be overcome. 
Indeed. His Grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Goddatha, for remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands, of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewellery be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the griffin, thinking I might claim the heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued, until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Goddatha, on behalf of my father and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff. Let him see that you have received his blessing, and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Shall we pay Father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since, since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it, for it too is a part of your inheritance. And I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. He's waiting. some things for sale. Certainly. Here you are. Go safely now. Let's go. Fly, Ambrosia.
Here we are again. Carava. If you were a tortoise, Togo, where would you hide? Have care. It looks like we found him. Fire and flame! <laughs> Mid needs another. She can come and get it herself. Here to help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two, in fact. If it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Of course. The children will be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Lubor, are you still here? What is it, Verda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. To listen to me. They're coming. Why do they always have to make such a fuss? <gasps> ah, it's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? 
to pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now, and they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. Come, Clive. If our words will not move them, then we must find another way to help save the town. Right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. Uh, I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now? Lord Ferda. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid! Ferda! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor, I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There will be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! Huh? <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, yeah. yeah run! Yeah. Far, yeah. far away! Just go! Yeah! Yes! Go! 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 <laughs> what did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you used 
every day, Conrad. And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever. But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going. And you act like it doesn't even exist. Lubo, we have heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. <sighs> so tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right, then. <clears throat> Fine. Gather round if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they are all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage, and they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Dalamil at all costs. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor, and the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchant not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. <sighs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalamil.
Looks like everyone's ready. I'd better not keep them waiting.